Let's talk about ships. Not that kind of ships. This kind of ships. Because I asked what you wanted me to talk about for my 1000 subscriber special. You all voted and ships won by a huge landslide of one vote. In this video, I will go through the central characters in Ascendance of a Bookworm and their ships. I'll give due consideration to the most popular ships, share my opinion of what makes them shippable, and what ultimately sinks the ship or makes it sail. Then I will wrap up by saying who is Endgame and how they get to that point based on what I remember from the web novel. It goes without saying that there are many, many light novel and web novel spoilers ahead, so proceed with caution. Ascendance of a Bookworm ships. Look at these two. Aren't they adorable? Even mine ship them. Thule is a responsible, caring, gentle older sister type. She's incredibly cute and her glistening green hair smells like flowers. Who couldn't help but have a crush on mine's older sister? Ralph, Lutz's older brother, seems like the perfect complement for Thule, also being the caring type. Except light novel readers know from as early as book one that Ralph is a bit mean, especially to his baby brother Lutz. And many of the things that he does are simply to impress Thule. He's not really authentic. However, that is not what sinks this ship. This ship is sunk the moment Thule decided to pursue her dreams and become an apprentice seamstress at the Gilberta Company, which meant a huge step up in the social ladder. But that didn't happen by magic. In order to get there, Thule had to work incredibly hard. She had to learn to read and write. She had to learn to take care of her appearance and learn to emulate Karina in as many ways as possible. She had to learn how to speak and comport herself in front of rich people and nobles. And even though it terrified her to step into the world of the upper city, she did so for the sake of mine. And in the process, she placed herself way, way out of Ralph's league by the time her coming of age came around. Sorry, Ralph, but you see, the only other person who could be a viable option for Thule, who knows all about her family, the secret about mine, and who is rich enough to match her rise in status is Benno. <laughs> yeah, okay, I am kidding, I'm kidding. After all, many Bookworm fans agree that Benno Mark is the far more viable ship here. I get why people would ship them. Mark is Benno's right-hand man, loyal and steadfast and reliable. Mark was there for him when Benno's father died and Benno ended up inheriting the store and all of its problems as a young man. Finally, both remain single all the way through to the end of the web novel, so let's just let this ship sail. Though, you know, there are some who would disagree and say that Benno Mine would be a much better ship. One of these people would be Karina, you know, Benno's sister. When she learns that thanks to all the products Mine is introducing, Benno will soon be swamped with much more work and would be much too busy to find a wife and marry, she suggests that Mine take responsibility for her brother. There is also Otto, who likes to be a troublemaker and who is responsible for spreading around the rumor that Mine is Benno's water goddess, making Benno super angry at him whenever he says that. When Mine asks what he means, he just explains that the water goddess, or the spring goddess, brings about an end to the long and cold and lonely winter, referring to Benno's bachelorhood. And as crazy as this age gap is, that is a moderately popular ship in the fandom, so let's explore it a bit. I'll be honest, if at any point I even considered Benno mine ship, it was at this time. Benno really cleans up nicely here. Or maybe it was this one. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if people such as myself are just shipping him with themselves through mine or not. But you know, whatever, who am I to judge in this case because have you seen him? Plus, hello, you know who his VA is. And anyway, Benno knows that mine is a weirdo, but decides it doesn't matter to him and accepts her for who she is. Because thanks to that weird otherworldly knowledge, she's bringing in a fortune to the company. They have an excellent working relationship due to the fact that mine is the most like her adult self when she's with Benno. She can't let herself be a pushover when negotiating and she won't let him take advantage of the fact that she's just a kid. So they match very well in that respect. 
So even though there's this huge age gap, their dynamic is really fun. And finally, even though he starts being kind of mean to her, he ends up being one of the people who protects her the most and works hardest on her behalf. There is a scene in the light novel and manga that unfortunately never makes it into the anime, but when she collapses at the temple, he totally freaks out, almost as if he's reliving the painful memories of when his own girlfriend died. He has mine lie down on the carriage seat with her head on his lap as a pillow, covers her with his cloak and holds her cold hands to warm them up, which embarrasses mine. Even Mark has to remind him that mine is not Liz, to which Benno replies, I know that. So don't say that she will be fine because it's not that simple. It's a very sweet scene, but again, it's neither here nor there. Benno is very clear that his heart would always belong to Liz, a woman who died years back, making it very tragic because how can you win against a dead person if they were his first and only love? Additionally, it is crystal clear that Benno cares for Mine a lot, but as his precious protege, and for Mine, having a relationship with him is unthinkable and as ludicrous as Delia becoming the concubine of evil Santa. And that is why this ship sinks. Okay, so these are all the easy, non-spoilery ones, but now I'm going to talk about the major ships. The ships that cause the members in the Facebook groups to suddenly declare civil war on each other and otherwise friendly bookworm fans to call each other mean names. Because let's face it, no matter what, in this world that Mia Kazuki has envisioned, any ship related to mine will be just a tad problematic. Especially this early on in the series when our protagonist is only seven years old. But mentally, she is also Urano, a 20-something college graduate who just landed her dream job, which means she is at least 22 years old. So she's a full-grown adult when she dies, then wakes up in the body of a five-year-old mine, which makes the mine Lutz ship problematic. Though I will be the first one to say this, I loved this ship. I was all aboard this ship when I first started watching the anime. These two are adorable together. He's the same age as her, which is awesome. He is patient, he's there for her, he helps her achieve her goals, he carries her when she's not feeling well. It was because of him that mine didn't give up on life. He also is the first boy who ever made her feel all embarrassed at being told she's cute. This is the ship that many of us really wanted to see sail, but there are some very important considerations that, well, doom this ship. First off, Mine still thinks of herself as Urano, an adult, and hence she can never think of Lutz as anything other than a friend. As for Lutz, it is unclear whether or not he ever saw her as something more than a friend, but whatever the case, the truth remains that Mine is frail and can't pull her own weight if she's going to continue to live as a commoner. She does not have the homemaker skills necessary to take care of a house, husband, and kids. And funny I should mention kids because it is clear that they will never be able to have them if they get married. People who have mana can only have children with other people who have the same or approximately the same amount of mana. Finally, what totally drives a cannonball into this ship and makes it sink for good is that mine ends up becoming a noble. The Archduke's adopted daughter at that, and any interaction between them as anything other than business relations is impossible. There was a time when she was allowed to hug Lutz in her hidden room and speak freely and without formality even after getting adopted, but that was only because she was still a little kid and she was emotionally unstable since she had been separated from her family. But once she got to a certain age and her engagement was announced, even that was taken away. So all these problems started because she entered the temple, but she would have died if she hadn't entered the temple. So either way, it wasn't gonna work out. But hey, at least the author gave us a glimpse of what it could have been like if mine didn't have the devouring and could have kept making paper with Lutz instead of going to the temple. In that case, Lutz and mine would have ended up much like Heidi from the Ink Workshop and her husband Joseph. The similarities are totally there. Heidi is super into her research and Joseph has to be there to look after her and, if necessary, keep her in check. Frankly though, it looks exhausting and Lutz deserves better than to have a lifetime of anxiety. It's good then that in the end, despite not being able to be with mine, he is still able to follow after his own dreams and reach his full potential. 
So then, who does Lutz end up with? Well, how about a really cute older sis type? No? Well, too bad, because he and Thule are endgame. And I know, I know it's not ideal, but it's canon and, I mean, they work well together, I suppose. <sighs> it's one of my small complaints about this web novel. Thule has absolutely no hope of ending up with the man she's in love with. So, because Lutz is the same standing as she, meaning he is a young merchant who is going places, and she has worked so hard to be able to work for nobles and with Rosamine specifically, it makes sense for her family to pair them together. In fact, outwardly, from the way Lutz goes to the Gilberta company to meet her whenever he has news about Rosamine, and how they walk home together and such, everyone is under the impression that they are an item, no matter how much they deny it. Also, I'm pretty sure I'm forgetting some details, but I think there's some people who want to steal her away because she's just so talented. So it was decided that getting married was the safest bet for her. So she agrees and gets engaged to Lutz. I wish the author had at least written more stories to show us that they slowly fall in love, but so far the extra short stories published in the Japanese light novels have only wrung my heart in pain. Take the one where Thule realizes she's stuck in an unrequited and hopeless love with Benno. It's so painful, and the worst thing is that Lutz knows that she's in love with Benno before she even does. Not only that, but in that short story, we see how Benno is forced to give up on a girl that he actually came to care for, which is so frustrating. I need Benno to find love, and I need Tuli and Lutz to love each other a lot. Otherwise, it will be just too sad. And well, speaking of sad things, let's talk about Damiel. I saw one or two comments that wanted me to talk about Damiel, so let's go. Okay, so this one had all the makings for a happily ever after, and yet it totally sunk. So for those of you anime onlys, Damiel is the nice knight. You know, the one that during the Trombe extermination stood by helplessly and let Shikikosa pull mine by her hair. Yeah, that one. That That's a nice one. Well, after that event, he is disgraced and his fiance breaks up with him. But at least he isn't dead like Shikikoza. He is demoted and told to become Mind's guard at the temple, a role that, despite everything, he does well in. He learns from his mistakes and becomes really invested in protecting Mind, despite her commoner status, to the point that Mind's final blessing reached and even healed him. This blessing helped him increase his mana so that even though he was at the bottom tier in regards to status and magical power, he leveled up and had enough mana to match that of a med noble. So he met this really cute knight who happened to be a med noble and who also happened to be in need of a marriage partner as much as he was. And thanks to the fact that his mana level now matched with hers, he could marry her. So all around, it was a very convenient match. And the cherry on top was that they also fell in love and grew to care for each other. It's all great, but this ship was doomed to fail because what they wanted out of each other and out of this marriage did not match at all. She wanted him to resign his job as Mine's guard so that they could be married and live in her home province. But Damiel was too conscientious about his work and did not want to just abandon his role as Rosamine's guard and in a decision that ultimately saved his life, he broke off their engagement. The thing is, despite the fact that he leveled up and now has a bunch more mana, he is still a lay noble, the lowest social tier in nobility, which is problematic because he can now only marry a med noble lady, as all the other lay noble ladies can't even hope to match his mana. Of all the med noble ladies, only Brigitte was willing to marry him, since a med noble marrying a lay noble meant to be demoted socially. Poor Damiel, he becomes that guy who really just wants to get married but ultimately can't. Not even the best matchmaker in all of Ehrenfest can help him. His luck with the ladies is so bad that the entire fandom has consigned him to eternal bachelorhood and have shipped him with Peru cakes. I mean, this one is for the laughs, of course. Damiel just loves Peru cakes so much that it has become a running joke in the bookworm community, making this ship one of the most fun ones to meme. Sell away, my ship, sell away. Not all hope is lost. There is someone for Damiel. Yeah, there really is. Okay, so in my opinion, this is an adorable ship, if we forget that there's a pretty large age gap. 
Philene is one of Rosamine's faithful retainers who helps her collect stories to add to her collection, and along with Damiel is one of only two lay novel retainers that Rosamine has. And cute little Philene falls in love with Damiel hard, so hard that it's just adorable. One thing in favor of this ship is that Philene learns the compression method that will help her level up her mana the way Damiel did, so they will be compatible by the time she's of age. Both of them are of the same lay noble status, and they are both in the service of Rosamine, so the problems that Damiel encountered with Brigitte will be pretty much null with Philene. The problem is, Damiel is pretty desperate to marry and Philene is still underage, so he will have to wait. Additionally, he will need convincing as he cares for her, but it feels like an older brother vibe. So I'm not going to put it past Philene to propose to him in the Dunkelfelger way to get a clear yes out of him because he's also super clueless. So let's just see how it goes and <laughs> good luck to them both. Let this ship sail with my blessing. There is one more ship I'd like to explore before truly delving into all of Rosamine's ships, and that is Hugo Ella. We don't get a lot of screen time for them in the anime, but their stories are actually really interesting. Hugo is a hardworking professional cook who aspires to become a noble's chef. And Ella? She just wants to get out of her uncle's restaurant where she is apprenticing. You see, in this world, female cooks wear many hats, working also as waitresses, and are even expected to give customers hospitality if they require it. And, you know, by hospitality, I mean, well, monetized baby making. She wants to escape that fate. So even though she's still a cook's apprentice, she goes for the job that no one else wanted, which was to work in the temple as a cook. And so she ends up working side by side with Hugo, who teaches her things, but who is also learning all of mine's new recipes alongside Ella. As fellow co-workers from the lower city, they experience the same culture shock of what it means to work for a noble, and for mine in particular. They are both forced to adopt strict cleanliness standards, like, you know, bathing every day, washing their hands, and wearing clean clothes every day as well. Now, much like Damiel, Hugo has no luck when it comes to the ladies. He had a girlfriend, but after a prolonged stay at the nobles district for work, she switched over to another fellow. So he's always complaining about his love life, and Damiel doesn't feel quite so bad knowing that there's another guy in the temple who's also desperate to get married. Ella, meanwhile, is gung-ho about her work and pokes gentle fun at Hugo. She's just happy that Hugo is nice and that he's someone that she and the other grey robe priestesses can feel safe with. But it is also strongly hinted that she already has feelings for him as early as the first winter that Mine stayed at the temple. I think this ship really works out. They both work for Mine and they are both very similar now that they have ascended from lower city kitchens and eateries where food scraps were pushed to the floor for the dogs to eat to cooking for nobles in clean and fancy kitchens. So yay! Sail away my ship! Okay, so enough about other characters. Let's really delve into what we're here for, which is Rosamine's ships and Endgame. But before I do, I would like to take this moment to remind you to please like this video if you've enjoyed it so far, and subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to hit that notification bell so that you know when my next video comes out. So if mine or Rosamine doesn't end up with Lutz or Benno, does that automatically mean that she had no other option than to end up with Ferdinand? Well, no. Once mine became Rosamine, things played out so that she came very close to marrying one of several eligible suitors. So there exist several very viable ships other than Ferdinand. First of all, we have Wilfried. Wilfried is the son of the Archduke of Ehrenfest, and is the presumed next one in line to become Ob. When Rosamine first meets him, he is willful, spoiled, and childish in the extreme, but he's really not a bad kid, he's just really had terrible influences growing up. Still, there's this a political match. The thing is, a Rosamine Wilfried ship was never really meant to be. Despite the fact that she's a commoner, he is still inferior to Rosamine in many ways. She is the trendsetter, she gets better grades than he does, she has amassed so much more political power, and even has more mana than he does. 
Wilfrid doesn't appreciate Rosamine's achievements. He wants her to tone it down a little and to start caring for him. But Rosamine can't care for him romantically. She agreed to marry him because it's a necessary political move and because she'll get to keep the Erenfuss Castle library. But she can't rely on him, likening him to a stool, a chair without a back. She can take a momentary breather, but not relax entirely with him. There are some other issues, but I won't delve into them for now. Suffice it to say that this ship, if it is in fact a ship, was already on the rocks when someone came along to challenge it. Lestalot. Hmm. Where can I begin with him? First of all, who is Lestalot? Well, he is the Archduke candidate and heir to the Grand Duchy of Dunkelfelder, and he is a few grades above her at the Academy. He is forceful and loud, and he and Rosamine butt heads on her first year at the Academy. Perfect. I love this. This is already shaping up to an enemies to lovers trope, and I am here for it. He thinks that she's a fake saint and a conniving bad sport, but with time, he comes to appreciate her achievements and he challenges Wilfried for Rosamine's hand. This ship works because, in contrast to Wilfried, he recognizes that she's incredibly gifted and that Erenfest is not large enough or important enough to contain or foster her talents. When he asks her what she wants out of a marriage, he offers to give her everything she asks for, from status of first wife to the entire collection of books that Dunkelfelder has, as well as all the resources that she needs to push forward the printing industry. In all honesty, if it weren't because I am and always will be a Ferdinand simp, I would have been fully aboard this ship. Rosamine would have really thrived in Dunkelfelder. Despite the fact that this duchy just loved to fight and play ditter, Rosamine herself is really good at the game, never having lost a single match, and she would have fit in with that bunch really well. Not only that, but she would be able to be quite close to her best friend, Hanalor, who is Lestalot's younger sister. And finally, despite his brashness, Lesselar also has a sensitive side. He is mitten with Rosamine, and he's an artist too. He has even drawn very beautiful pictures of her, as she did a dedication dance, as well as illustrations for her books. So why didn't this ship sail in the end? Well, one simple reason. If she decides to accept his proposal, she'll then have to move to Dunkelfelger and away from her family and friends in the lower city. And no matter how tempting the offer, that is ultimately the deal breaker. Still, this is a very, very popular ship, especially with the Japanese fans who have made some really nice fan art and fanfics based on this ship. So far be it from me to sink this ship. Just let it be. Finally, in the line of ridiculously high-ranked suitors that Rosamine has is Sigiswald. Sigis Sigiswald. Yeah, Sigiswald, the crown prince. Again, like Wilfried, this isn't really a ship. I don't know if there's anybody who is waiting with bated breath for this ship to sail. I seriously doubt it. It just happened that for you know reasons, she half-heartedly agrees to become one of his wives. But this and that happened, and that engagement went nowhere in the end, much to our relief. Now, there are some fan favorites which are not canon, but which I'll briefly touch upon because there really are people who legitimately ship these. So we have, first of all, Rosamine Charlotte. Charlotte is just so adorable. I love her. I want to put her in my pocket and keep her near my heart. She's just that cute. And she's so supportive of her adoptive older sister too. Compared to Wilfried, her older brother, she's a far more gifted leader. She also adores Rosamine. And if I recall correctly, she even said at one point that she wished she could have been born a guy so that she could be with Rosamine. There's also a bunch of people who ship Rosamine with Eglantine. Eglantine being the princess from the Grand Duchy of Klassenburg. She is absolutely stunning, so that even Rosamine is quite taken with her, praising her in public in a way only a suitor would. Eglantine replies saying that if Rosamine had been born a man, her words would have won her over. Eglantine ends up marrying some prince, but asks him, hey, why don't you, you know, make Rosamine your second wife? <laughs> So, I mean, that's fine. We all see what you're trying to do there, Eglantine. For me, however, this ship sinks and nothing can salvage it. Stuff happens in part 5 that made me not a fan of Eglantine. 
but if you're a fan of the ship, that's totally fine. That's cool. I'd rather go with the next ship. Ah, Adolphine, you tragic beauty. I simply ship you two because you deserve a happy ending after what happened to you. Honestly, I like her better than Eglantine. Yes, she's very ambitious and competitive and a bit overbearing, but she's straightforward. Still, Rosamine is on her guard when it comes to Adolphine after she tried to reverse engineer Rosamine's Rinsham. However, by the end of the web novel, there is potential here, as they come to respect each other. Rosamine sticks up for her at a crucial moment, and they go after similar goals. And the last of the fan-favorite non-canon ships is Rosamine Hanalor. Hanalor is simply adorable. Hanalor is everything her brother isn't. Sweet, gentle, soft-spoken, and shy. She's also not a very good Archduke candidate, but that is beside the point. She has an adorable quirk of always being at the wrong place at the wrong time. That's why she constantly prays to the goddess of time. She is Rosamine's one true friend at the Academy, being not only another Archduke candidate, but also a fellow book lover. Rosamine has also gotten her involved in all kinds of shenanigans, and Hanalor has put up with it with so much patience. It's a wonder that she still wants to be Rosamine's friend. So just imagine them together. They would read books and have tea parties and go crazy at the library. So adorable. Also, while we're on the subject of Hanalor, a slight tangent that I can't leave out. They end up tangled up during this scene in the web novel, and somehow it works. Look, Hanalor just wants someone who is the total opposite of her brother. She wants someone who will listen to her opinions and what she has to say. She wants someone who has a caring and gentle side, and after Wilfried stepped in to help her feel better after various disastrous encounters involving Rosamine, he left a good impression on her. Then this happened, and Hanalor ends up with a crush on Wilfried. While Wilfried might not be high on people's favorite characters list, it still works at this point. A lot of web novel readers have shipped them, myself included. And if you have read the Hanalor book that follows after the conclusion of the web novel, you may also have some thoughts and opinions about this ship. I will not disclose my own thoughts for now, but there is a ship here and let's just let it sail. We'll revisit it later, like much, much later. We have to talk about the elephant in the room, you know, the major ship. Because no matter how adorable, how cute, or how precious these ships are, to me, nothing beats Fermi, the official name of our endgame couple. So, the responsibility of convincing all of the naysayers to jump aboard this ship is much too heavy for me to bear alone. So, I'm just going to say a couple of things and leave it up to you to decide. If you're against this ship because of the age difference, then worry not. These two are also very much against getting married when she's still a little kid. They wholeheartedly reject the idea of ending up together for quite a long time. In fact, it takes, I don't know, 6,000 pages for one of them to even develop romantic feelings for the other. And also please remember that mentally, Rosamine is just as old as Ferdinand. And Ferdinand himself knows about this. He's the keeper of her secrets, her teacher, her mentor, her guardian, her doctor, her defending knight. He's her family when she is forced to leave her lower city friends and family behind. The beauty of this ship is that it's not just Ferdinand who is all these things for Rosamine. It's a two-way street. She also takes care of him. She makes sure that he eats delicious food, stands up for him when Sylvester overburdens him with work, makes these insane care packages for him when he's away, makes an amulet so he will not come to harm, makes deals with the royal family to ensure his well-being, and in his greatest crisis, saves his life, saying she'd do so even if it meant going against the wishes of her family, her friends, the king, and even the gods to do so. It also doesn't hurt that she's closer to being a grown-up, and she's gorgeous when Ferdinand begins to have feelings for her. It also doesn't hurt that he owns the largest private collection of books in the world and gives it to her. And when all is said and done, wasn't that the one thing that Rosamine always asked for? Books? Furthermore, there is one important detail you need to know. By the end of the web novel, she has so much mana that no one, not even members of the royal family, can ever match her. Except Ferdinand, which means that the only person she could ever start a family with is Ferdinand. 
And if all of that is not enough, then it's important to note that even though he was so in love with Rosamine at the end, he gave her the choice to return to her family. He even went so far as to rescue some of the memories that she had lost about her family, just so that she could make a proper, well-informed decision. Then he outlined how he could make it work for her to return to her life as a commoner so that she could be with Lutz if she wanted to. And still, Rosamine chose to stay with him. And this is so important. Rosamine ends up with Ferdinand not because of some Stockholm Syndrome thing. She ends up with him because she chose him and she chose the future that they could have together. A future where she could truly spread her wings, expand the printing industry, start her library, start an educational system where commoners could become literate, and no one would try to stifle her or tell her to, you know, tone it down a little. Rosamine is free to be her most authentic version of herself with Ferdinand, and he gets to be the most authentic version of himself with her. Plus, he gets to have the family he always longed to have with her. And, you know, I truly, truly can't think of a better endgame than that. I know you all have all kinds of thoughts after watching this video, so please be sure to share them in the comments. I look forward to reading all of your thoughts and fan theories too. And if there is a ship I missed, then please feel free to also share it with us. And finally, I want to end this video by thanking each and every one of you for your support so far. When I first started this channel a few months back, I was sure no one would listen or care about what I had to say in my unhinged rants. But I still made it, hoping that it would reach a few other bookworms like me. My first video had bad audio and it rendered wrong, yet you all still decided to give it a like. You subscribed, you commented, and now here we are at 1000 bookworms and counting. So once again, thank you all. Love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>